tens of nines for milk. <laughs> oh my God, we're finally here, bro. All right. Episode one of the Milk Stand Podcast. We made it. How you doing today, Jonathan? I'm good, Anthony. Yourself? <laughs> I'm doing. Good, I'm doing fucking great. I'm ecstatic. I'm, I'm fucking excited, bro. Me too, man. Me too. Um, we fucking we wanted to do this almost two, a year ago. A year ago. We definitely spoke about it, but you know, life happens. You know how it go. Yeah. Right. So definitely. we made it though, man. So yeah, life. man. Like so, I'm excited about this milk stand. You know, I've been. I had this. I had milk stand itself since 2018, on and off. Um. Started with the whole Instagram blog post, mm -hmm. and then from there I just was like, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do with it. Like, you know me, like, I'm so creative. I have so many different ideas, so many different uh, brands that I've worked with. Even I've been working in the music shit. Mm -hmm. So like, I kind of got lost a little bit, to be honest. And when I first started, I kind of started it based off of like other people, because you know the whole milk thing, like. Milk, 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 like you know, T.Y. Trap. I mean, K from Hollis. Yeah. I mean, a day from Harlem, and then Boss started picking up on it. He even named one of his album. He named his album Milky Way, mm -hmm. and you can hear Trap on there, as you can hear in the intro. When you milk your milk, you know what I'm yeah. saying. And and w when you milk your milk, it's kind of like a positive affirmation too. I don't want people to understand what what milk is like, because there's real no real definition of milk. It's just like milk, dope. Right, like that's butter. Like how we used to say that's butter back butter. in the day. That's butter, baby. <laughs> that's butter, baby. <laughs> I hear that. Yeah. So it. milk, like when you milk your milk, you can't deny the milk. It's like we're black people, we're dope. Yeah. We're ill individuals. Like you can't deny who who we are. It feels good though. Yeah. Like, and I, I feel like a lot of things, and that's the thing with art, even like words, because you could even that's artsy, right? Yeah. In itself, and it's crazy because it's a real object and something that we growing up on and it's pretty much essential almost right yeah. and um my interpretation is dope i feel like it's just art and these things in general is, is really dope that people interpret it their own way like yeah. that's what makes that's what makes people dope though you know no, that's saying? a fact that's a fact so, so what you been up to jonathan everything bro i've been up to everything man i um i didn't even launch it yet it's still in the the process of being launched but uh I just started like a lifestyle company. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was kind of crazy how this thing even like manifested because yeah, I was like just putting up pictures and stuff like outfits and shit on the gram. You know, people coming to me like, who styles you? Like, I style myself, I put it together myself. People hit me in the, in the inbox like, yo, where'd you get this from? And um, what I was very good at was finding things for like on sale, like a lot cheaper than people actually would think. You know what I'm saying? So what I wanted to do was show people, yo, you can get fly, you don't gotta spend a thousand dollars on the outfit. Like, yo, you might be able to spend $125 for a whole fit and look different from everybody else, have your own little flavor going. Like, so I did that. I started um putting some stuff on Danny Green from the Lakers. It's my brother. Um, shout out to him. Um Word. Me, right, big shout out. We, it's to play AU with Danny. Right, man, big shout out, my <laughs> brother. Um, so I did that and it just kind of like Snowball effect, mm -hmm. man. So just two weeks ago, I was in um, LA. I did like a real a promo shoot. I did a promo shoot for myself first, which doubled up as a birthday shoot. Then I went out to LA, shot him, shot um, my man Spain. Shout out to him. And yeah, I, I played I play, I play in, play in Spain in college. Right, it's my dog. And uh, I shot my homegirl, Barry. So it came out really, really, really fire, man. Spain was looking like... He was looking real milky. He was looking right. real comfortable. Right. Like he was like, like I've been here. Before yeah, what? Well. <laughs> That's how I felt too. But um, well. yeah, it really flowed, man. And it was it was so dope because it's my family. Everybody that was involved, the person that shot, the the person behind the scenes, the person that shot behind the scenes, behind the scenes, like mm -hmm. it was all my family. Tracy Dukes, uh, it's my dog. A lot of people, man, was just involved. Trigger, photographer, uh, New Day Jovi. So it was a lot of people that was involved, man. That was really really dope. So. I saw Ant was out there. Was Ant shooting any flicks? I know he's like a photographer now too, Antoine. Nah, he, nah, he wasn't shooting. He was there though. He was there. Um, he actually be like helping me piece some shit together too. Yeah. You know, he worked for uh, Ralph Lauren, so he be putting stuff on Danny too. You know, it's so crazy how like we all know each other from basketball from right. when he was like nine, ten years old. Now look at us like. Right. Antoine, I knew from Antoine from when he was like seven years old, bro. Uh, Gaucho's biddies, super biddies. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> It's just, yo, it's, it's known you since like the third, fourth grade. Right. 
it's just like everything is just tied in together, bro. Like, and you never know, man, like who you're gonna run back into. I'm just happy to see everybody doing good, man. It's literally all I'm happy to be happy to see. Nah, but. facts. Like, and you know, you and I, we've always been trying to do something. We're like, creatives. Nah, yeah, definitely. We are creatives, and man. I, I didn't I didn't really get into this zodiac thing until like maybe a year ago, but like apparently, like our man Kofi, our brother Kofi, he was telling me like, you know. Like Gemini's and Aquarius, like they create well together. Like they're always creating together. It's a fact. So yeah, I guess it was like inevitable. Almost, I feel like deja vu a little bit. Like looking out this window, like it's like <laughs> I was. Before. I sat here already. Like you been. Before. I sat here already recording. I think that's a good thing, though. Nah, that's fact. That's a fact. It's a good thing. Like I ain't gonna lie, I thought I'd be nervous doing this shit, but this shit feels good. It feels comfortable. I mean, Absolutely. Again, like I'm, I'm ecstatic, bro. Me too. Me too. I'm ecstatic. So how do you feel about the? The NBA coming oh, back. Oh my god, I'm excited about it, but um, yeah, they struggling in there, bro. Well, you, yeah, spoke, they, you spoke to Danny. I speak to him every day. He literally <laughs> FaceTime us every day, bro. <laughs> Yo, they're in there struggling, yeah. Like, you gotta think about it. If I'm coming from, not even just my crib, I got a, I'm a millionaire. I got a multi million dollar crib, right? Whatever. If I'm on the road. I'm in a suite every trip. I'm in a Four Seasons. I'm in, yo, this shit is like, they ain't like the Radisson, bro. <laughs> like, the, yeah, the room is like, it's ridiculous. Like, ridiculous, ridiculous. Food, they getting like food and trays. It look like fucking space food. Like, oh, so bad. that, so, so what we were seeing on the internet was real that's shit. A, that's a fact, bro. It's real. So he's just trying to get through it the best way he can. His closet's like this big. Yeah, he got to get a whole nother room for his sneakers and clothes. Like, it's bad. They in there suffering for real. So the whole NBA is in the Radisson, pretty much. It's not real. I don't know if it's really called the Radisson, but it's like the Radisson, bro. Oh, it's like, like the Radisson. Like so, so it's like room. it's so 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 the hotel is like on the resort. Yeah, I mean, it's, on the, it's, it's a resort, resort hotel. Yeah. So what they're trying to do to make things a little better for them is to give them like little outlets. Like you can go into like a game center. You can play all the games. They're trying to give them like a little access to um, the rides and shit now. So, mm. but. Yeah, I remember playing there years ago. Remember, it was like the it was a Nike at, at Walt Disney. World. Um, I think I think ages. At the, it was at the Milk Center. At the Milk Center, they call it. Well, it was definitely it was the one Nationals. year I played at the ESPN joint, ESPN Walt Disney joint, and then I think later on when I was in high school when we for AAU, we played. Uh, we I think it was the same thing, but it, it changed from AAU to like a, a Nike circuit event. I can't, I can't remember. It's been so long ago. Nah, the facility was fire, though. Yeah, nah, facts. The facility was very fire. Facts. So yeah. it, I kind of think about it like the whole uh, the bubble is going to be like an AAU feeling, but just with grown-ass men. Yeah, but these, so, niggas, yeah. these niggas are worth about $100 million, <laughs> So <laughs> you got to think about where they're coming from. Uh-huh. Like It's like two different. It's, it's crazy. Like To watch it, then they couldn't. They had to stay in their room three, four days. You got to think about... Nobody could visit. Like it was crazy. They, nobody could visit t- for two months. That's it. Like you're locked in. They're doing a bid, bro. But guess what? Nobody. But it's like doing a bid. But like you said, on the on the reverse end, they worth 100 million. They worth millions. Right. So I'm doing a bid, but I'm worth millions to play ball to get. And right. and keep it real though too. You have to do this to get your check. Like, yeah. Well, if you, if you don't have a LeBron a LeBron type of contract where it don't matter what you can get paid regardless, not, but but not every player has that. See, so but some you gotta think about this too, and this is what they was talking about. I, I think the players' association is trying to work on something where, um, you get paid regardless. Why am I not being paid? Like, I didn't start Corona. I didn't say, "Yo, I'm not playing." Like, they didn't choose to do that. Why would I not get paid? So, but you gotta think about how they getting paid though. Like, it's TV money, TV. You know what I'm saying TV dollars. Mm-hmm. So, but that has nothing to do with me. <laughs> I don't. My contract is my contract. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So they got to work on that. Mm-hmm. So what do you think about the playing aspect? Like how, how, well, let me not ask you that because my assumption of the playing aspect was it'll be fine because you went to Juco. I yeah, went to Juco. Absolutely. It's going to be like a Juco feel. It is. <laughs> Where it's like a little to nobody in the gym. Right. <laughs> like even right. if you did, and, and, and even if you did play D1 Juco, which I did, it still don't be people in the fans like that until you get to like states. And that's different. So when yeah. you get to the tournament, yeah. it's lit. Yeah, but when you just regular season it's conference, there's nobody in it. The 15 people on the team. And once you're playing coaches. ball, once you're playing ball, you're playing ball. That shit don't matter. Yes and no, though. Here's my thing. I think the stars shine regardless. 
Yeah. That's like playing at home opposed to playing on the road in the league. Stars are going to shine. Yeah. The role players, though, might be a little different. I think the role players, there's going to be some role players that's going to really elevate their game because maybe they're a little nervous in front of 20,000 people. Yeah. Now we're playing glorified open run. You shame me? I might be the eighth man of the bench getting 20. Did you see TBT? Yes. Bro, that's how I watched that. I'm like, oh, this is what this is gonna be with the NBA, but better, right? Because more athletic, like it'll do a son, just like how we watching. I've been watching the uh, the, uh, the open runs on um, YouTube. That it's gonna be like that, bro. It's gonna be like that, but now you have refs. Now you got refs, but let me tell you what I don't want them to do. They took my simulating fans. Don't fucking don't do what that. What do you bro. mean simulate fans? Bro, don't do that. It's gonna fight like 2K. I don't wanna fucking play 2K. You mean like, like fake like noise clappers yeah, and shit? Don't. Like, no, no, no. Yes. no. This, this is not no was it Hollywood studio, bro? Right. <laughs> like, it's a my simulated noise, bro. For who? The viewers? For the viewers. No, don't do that. That's what they told me. Bro, I think it makes that. I think it's gonna make it's gonna make it very weird. But I think it's it's gonna make us a little more if they do it. I hate it. I don't want them to do it. I don't. I think it's gonna make the viewers feel a little more comfortable though, because right now we're just gonna be like, <laughs> like just fucking looking at the screen, like you know what I'm saying. I want you to really think about that. Really think about which part though. Watching the game, no noise. Bro, I just told you I watched the TBT. Nah, listen, this is different. You, yes, TBT is a great. Comparison, I guess. And TBT is the tournament, by the way, the, the ultimate tournament, by the way. Um, they recorded on ESPN. The basketball tournament. Yeah, and they're like two and million now, right? If I think it was still a million, mm. it's a million dollars. The championship. I, I was watching the championship the other day. It wasn't. It wasn't bad at all, bro. It wasn't because yeah, you, you, you you had the people on the bench wilding like. Ah. Bro, you're a hooper though. You're a hooper. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, so, so I'm not thinking of the average individual general, who loves sports. General fan, I can be like, uh, that that's huge for them. That's huge for them. Think about it. I'm gonna tell you what's gonna go up though, betting. So, betting is gonna go up crazy. I bet on sports, right? DraftKings. This is a this is a sidebar trying to drop a gem, right? Before this shit gets big, so you know I do like a couple of shares and shit. I be buying stocks and shit. Get DraftKings, y'all. DraftKings right now is like thirty dollars. Once and sports is not even here yet. Like, it's just shooting up. It's like a hundred dollars. You too. And to y'all, buy DraftKings. Because you're going to want to feel more involved in the game. You can't go to the games no more. Mm, gonna be so you're going to like, oh, so, okay, I get it. You're going to bet. I get that, I get that aspect. They're going to bet. They want to be involved. Yeah. Gambling. Mm -hmm. DraftKings. Like, when you, when, when you just said that people want to get more involved, I kind of get the aspect, but like, I'm not a gambler. The most game I ever did was roll dice. So, okay. so uh, um, and I know you used to like gamble like with... Sports. Sports and stuff like that. Um, I've never been a... I've gambled playing dice and shit. Like, but I've never been like a big dice game. I never really even do like tables and shit at a casino. But I feel I felt better doing sports because I play sports, right? But, yo, this pandemic been the biggest blessing in disguise for me because yeah, I used to do like maybe like 1200 a month gambling on sports. Some wins, some losses, of course. But since there's been no sports, I started gambling on stocks. Like, so now I'm like... Heavy in the stock market. Um, and that's fun for me because it's still a gambling aspect. There's still that adrenaline rush. I can still look and watch my money grow or lose today. And it's kind of, this is going to sound crazy, right? But, yo, I accept the losses like that. I accept the wins. It comes with it, right? So I may lose three, four, five hundred, six, seven hundred dollars a day. Not a day. On a given day. But I may make six hundred dollars the next day. So that's fun for me. Like, that adrenaline is great. So DraftKings went public like... Mm. Maybe like two months ago, I quoted at nineteen dollars. It got up to forty dollars, and that's without sports. You can't even <laughs> you can't gamble right now, so that's without sports. That's they got fantasy sports, they got gambling. So when sports come back, I shit is out of here. It's a hundred dollars stock. Yo, the funny thing that you said about the whole um, I didn't even think you was gonna talk about stocks when it comes to that, because I'm into stocks. And my and my brother Reem, like Reem is like Reem been teaching me about stocks. He day trade? Reem day trade? He kinda day trades, like he watches the stocks closely. Like me so I learned from my CPA to like uh buy stocks into like buy stocks that uh things that interest you. So you play the long game. So I'm playing the long game, right? But I speak to my brother and my uncle, they tell me like, no, like when it goes high, you sell it. 
because it's going to go back down, mm-hmm. and then you buy when it's low again, and it goes yep. back up, play that. So I haven't, I don't play that game. And then there's also the game that you're playing, where it's like you gamble, you just put the money in, and then take it out. So me, like, for, for example, like the reason why I invest in stocks, I don't do the gambling route, but I do the investment, where it's like, I wear a hell of a lot of Nike. Why not own pieces of Nike? That's how I think about it. So I have like five shares of Nike, like or like buy five stocks, whatever, however you call it, whatever you call it. Chipotle. I eat a lot of Chipotle yeah. because I'm not vegan, but I'm plant based focused, with, gotcha. which means that most. So that's that's the only that's fast food. That's very very fancy of you. Yeah. Plant based focus. Yeah. Very my, fancy. My, my my girl told me that. Well, she <laughs> not that she told me that. She just said it one day. I was like, Yo, I'm gonna start using that's that. That's so fancy because. Like- I say, if I say I'm vegan to somebody, they'll be like, well, you still eat eggs, or you still eat mayonnaise, you still eat cheese. All right, but I don't eat, like, hardcore meat. I don't eat fish. I don't eat chicken. So that's the reason. I don't want to get too deep into the whole, ve- the whole eating thing as, right we'll, now. We'll, we'll touch that, though, because yeah. I really want to speak about that, because that's a whole other world. Yeah, it's a whole other world, because I, I, got a, I got a lot to say about that. Because a lot, I get attacked a lot. Well, it's not, it's not attack. However, people try attempt to attack me. You want to know why though? It may not be you. No, I know but, it's not me. But listen, it's different. They're trying to project on me. Right. I'm saying to you though. <laughs> now listen. Listen to what I'm saying though. You may not be projecting on anybody else, but these vegans and whatever else. Yeah, they go hard. It's like they're like Jehovah's Witnesses. No offense, right? So they're trying to like, <laughs> yo, listen. You're not a vegan. Get out. Like, get out of here. Beat it. Like. You eat meat? What's wrong? Like, yo, relax. Yeah, like, your shirt, your shirt is made from wool. <laughs> yeah, like it's made from it's made from an animal. Right. Like that's so, a, like that's a vegan. A vegan is someone who doesn't use any animal products. Period. Yeah. That's what a vegan is. And then a plant based person doesn't eat anything that has um, animal products. And that's a plant based eater. So when I say plant based focus, like my diet is heavily plant based. However. I may dibble and dabble in things that do have animal type of products in it, but I don't eat hardcore meat. I don't eat, again, and I'm not a pescatarian, but I'll I'll eat fish once a month. But that's it. You don't eat nothing Once every two, three months. No chicken, no... No chicken, no meat, no beef paws, like none of that. How you feel though? I feel great, bro. When when I first did it, I did it because I had knee surgery, tore up my whole meniscus, I have no meniscus. Um, and I was going to walk for two, three months. Mm. So I said, I'm not eating meat because I'm not going to sit here in this bed and get heavy. I actually <laughs> lost weight by doing that. <laughs> That's actually crazy, though. I lost weight, and then once I started walking and working out again, I gained weight back, and then I started this uh, this intermittent fasting diet. Lost 20 pounds again. What you at now? I'm at 167, but don't look like it. Well, I ate two bags of bacon on the way here, and... Um, <laughs> Turkey or, so- I, turkey or pork? Pork. Shit me? Listen. Turkey he bacon, said shit at me? <laughs> turkey, turkey bacon looks like a toy. Like, looks like toy bacon. Remember I used to have, like, the little kitchens and shit when we was young? That's what it looks like to me. That's, that's I a, cannot eat it, bro. Pork. Pork bacon. I, have ba- I put bacon on everything. Everything I could ba- put bacon on, I do. So, don't, <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts has, they're just selling bags of bacon, bro. What you, you, oh, you're serious. I'm dead ass serious, though. I'm dead serious. Yo, ladies and gentlemen, this man said... <laughs> I'm dead serious. Like. This man said he ate bags of bacon. Two bags of bacon, bro. I was going to get three. Yo, yeah, what saying. happened to you, bro? You used to be like this fitness guy. What's up? You eating two bags of bacon? I'm still a fitness guy. <laughs> I just eat what I want. <laughs> I run my mouth a mile and a half a day. Yo, hold on, hold on. Well, we can't promote that because our bodies are different. Right. Agreed. 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 <laughs> we can't promote that. I'm sorry, though. Yeah, we Don't can't promote me on that. Because... But, you know what I mean? Com- conversations I have with people, like e- even my girl, like she be like, "Yo, you work out for two weeks and you get da da da." I'm right. like, "Well, I've been playing basketball since I was seven years old, working out all that since I was seven years old, playing high competitive basketball from high school. No, forget that from junior high school. Since junior high school, traveling man. the country, even before that. You know what I'm saying? So our bodies are going to be different. Yeah, and I'm not promoting it. Oh, okay, not, just, just make but, no, you know but, what I do say because you know this there's, there's this culture out here called cancel culture. Or like I don't, culture, know, attacking I don't culture. don't cancel, don't cancel. Attacking culture. Before I even get started. They attack you every little thing you say. Unfortunately, I kind of hate it, but at the same time, it's real. It's you, real, but I'm the to a certain extent, I don't give a fuck. I'm the vice guy, bro. Yo, that's your vice. I'm not the judger. I'm not judge. No, Listen, we should, we, nobody should judge anybody. To be honest, yeah, but, but that's not how it goes, though, right? Mm. Yo, if you want to fucking eat 19 bags of bacon, or if you don't want to eat bacon at all. 
You need grass. I don't care what you eat, yo. Like, that's on you. It's your vice. Word. Vice. You know what my vice is? Sneakers. <laughs> that's a my great sneakers. pivot, right? My right. vice, sneakers. Right. And if, Very good and, segue. If, and if a lot of you guys follow, follow Milk Stand um, on IG, which is milk.stand on IG, um, you'll see it at the bottom of the screen. Um, sneakers. I love sneakers. That's what Milk, milk Stand kind of like starts from there, like, like, like a lot of my boys in the hood like to say, yo, the kicks I have on is milk. And that's where it came from. And that's how I started saying milk. Um, so yo. like, how do you feel about all these like, these drops? Like, I'm, to be honest, how many sneakers have you bought during this pandemic? Yeah, I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm going to be very, very honest with you. Yeah, I bought like two pairs of sneakers. Only two? I've been trying to, because before the pandemic, yeah. I, was, I was bugging before the pandemic, like, like six, seven, eight pairs of sneakers a month. Like, I was like, yo, you know what? Let me try to be a responsible adult for a second. Being for real. Responsible adult for a second and not buy wild sneakers. And I tried it, but I'm feeding lately. Like the past, past week or two, mm-hmm. the last couple of drops I saw, really fire. So I'm about to pick back up. I just wanted to take a break for a second. Just to see if I could do it. Yeah. So, me, when the pandemic first started, I was like, all right, I'm not going to buy nothing <laughs> because I don't know what my next, t- I'm going to keep it real. Like, and I usually don't think like this. And this is right in the beginning. I was like, I don't know where my next paycheck is going to come from. Like, I was working in the entertainment industry. Um, and then, like, my job literally, like, on March 20th, I'll never forget. But, no, put it this way. A week before, right, I was speaking to the people at my, at my job. They was like, yo, you think this coronavirus is going to stop concerts and sports events? I'm like, hell no. That shit ain't going to stop. What are you talking about? And it's like, I'm a, little, I'm a little worried. People aren't buying tickets like they used to. I'm like, yo, bro, sorry. A week later... I was going to venues, and I had to have a conversation with these ticketing um, managers and, and like in MSG and shit like that. Like, yeah, we're gonna be doing like automatic refunds and blah blah blah. I'm like, oh, so this shit's done, then. Mm. And now they're saying no, no concerts till 2021. So, so that career was over. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, a person that's in love with shoes. Thank God, I, thank God I've learned to like save money. So I had a lot of money saved where I could like put money aside to pay for my rent. So all right, cool. I could eat, I could survive, I'm good. And then I didn't think I was gonna be able to get a um unemployment because I was a 1099. So I'm like, oh shit. But then they say they say, oh, gig workers in 1099 got unemployment? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna keep it real. I don't care. I spend my unemployment on sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Yo, that's my advice, bro. And that's cool. But but, but the but within even within that though, I'm still being responsible. So instead of buying one pair of sneakers a week, I probably buy like I was buying like two a month. I was buying I was buying two sneakers a month. It's cool. Okay. It's cool. Um, this month I didn't buy because I wanted to really get this damn podcast started. So I bought I start, I bought a new camera. Mm. I bought these extra mic. I bought uh mad gear. So I'm like, you know what? Let me invest myself because sneakers. Even though sneakers is my advice, it's still kind of an investment because it's kind of like. It's, it's, it's the life that I want to live. Like, don't be ashamed to live the life that you want to live. Mm. Don't let anybody bring you down how you utilize your money. If you're saving it and you're doing it responsibly, that's your life. That's how you do it. Don't let anybody tell you what well, you should be doing is you should be doing that. Yeah, good advice is good advice. Don't get me wrong on that either. However, my advice in my life is kicks. Like, I've been doing it ever since I can remember. Like, today, I got my favorite pair of sneakers on. The first pair, the first pair of MJs that I've seen with my own eyes would be like, I want. Like, there's pictures of me and Jordans when I was younger before I could speak and shit like that. I was born in 87, so I had, like, the Jordan my dad was buying me. But, like, I'll never forget when Jordan had the sixes on and he dunked on Ewan. And I, I was like, nah, I was telling my mom, nah, I want those. That's dope. I want those. Like, so that's, that's, my, that's my recollection. So my favorite sneaker Jordan is the Jordan sixes, infrared. So with that being said, I still buy sneakers during the pandemic. But it's been kind of it's been kind of tough for me to get a lot of shoes too though because of the whole bots and yeah the resale. bots the bots are ridiculous. <laughs> I'm I'm not but, knocking them though because I'm not gonna lie, I resell shoes too. No, that's cool, but at your own pace, yeah. at your own rate. You didn't buy a bot. 
also, and I heard these super bots are crazy yeah, too. Also, yeah, like when everything is open, when outside it's open. I got people that hold sneakers for me. You know what I'm saying? There's no there's stores. That, there's no stores. I'm not waking up at fucking like whatever to wait in line online. Let's. I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. I don't. You know what I'm saying? Like it's mm -hmm. not really that big of a thing for me. And I love sneakers, but me, I'm the type that instead of me going to get every drop per se, yeah, I'll find some shits that niggas not really don't want too crazy right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and get it and really put together some fly shit with it. Then niggas look at them like, oh, oh shit. I didn't know those were that fly if you could put it together like that. Yeah, and that's, that's another thing with sneaker culture too, because originally when I got into sneakers, obviously I was still like, we was in elementary school, like, I don't know if it'd be, it, in elementary school, I remember it should be like me, you, John, I mean, me, you, Nick, Tyshawn, mm -hmm. um, and there's a few others to always have like the latest Jordans. Right. Like, so like, that was it. It was like, yo, like, those sneakers are dope. Like, like I'm, I want them. Like, you buy what you like. I even had, like, you know, the, even, even, even now, even now, or, you know, even in high school, college, I used to buy, like, not the so popular shoes, but people were like, oh, those are fire. Where'd you right. get those from? Exactly. But so people are just so hung up on the hype shit, the hype beat shit. Listen, get what you like. I see, yo, honestly. And, and shout out to my man T-Mark, because like, I, I did a documentary for my um, thing, and that's, the, that's one thing he told me that stuck with me. Just buy what you like. Buy what you like. People aren't doing that anymore. No. Yo, let me tell you something, real shit. Yo, you see these people, no offense to anybody who, I don't, I don't have a problem with it, it's not my twist, I wouldn't wear them, but these big ass chunky shoes, like, you niggas, I'm sure there's some people that, that's wearing them that don't even care for them. No, no. I'm 100% sure of that. Like, I don't own a pair of chunky shoes. No, I'm, I'm and they're getting it because it's the cool thing to do. They spend eight, nine hundred on some shit they don't even like. That's crazy. And here, here's the thing, right? Dad's shoes are in, are in style, right? I was buying dad, quote unquote, dad sneakers, like the ZX 700 Adidas. You have a few pairs, though. The ZX joint. This is my shit. Mad comfortable, too. I, I was wearing them, and people were like, oh, what the fuck are you wearing? And I remember I pulled them out maybe like a year or two ago. Oh, those are fire. We get them from. I'm like, yo, bro, these are from 2006. People following fads, bro. Like, Trends. and that's why I just, I just, the only fad that I did do, I'm not gonna lie, is the Prada fad. That. Yeah, I never, I never owned a pair of Pradas. Yeah, I had like five pairs. Of, I have my, I ain't gonna lie. When I got, when I got my girl. She was like, yo, get rid of those shits. I'm like, nah, I'm keeping these. <laughs> I'm keeping they it. were fire though. I just I just got rid of my last pair of products last year. But you know what's so crazy? They're coming back around. And I'm not getting back on. Don't. But I'm saying if you'd have kept them though, I think the best thing about yeah, they were so durable. Like you could wear them you, yo, you could wear them wherever, with whatever. Did you wear them to St. Mary's? No, nah, I didn't. I had um I, I told you I never had products. Hey, I used to wear you did, you did I used sorry. to wear like Eastlands and shit, like I used to switch it up, but no Pradas. Oh, okay. We tried, we tried to get rid of, uh, get, uh, get, uh, get over on Pradas. They wasn't having it. Y'all so can wear them? Hell no. We used to get detention for that. Nah, that's fine. So then we started, so we started wearing Wallabies, cloth Wallabies. I used to wear Wallabies. I used to love Wallabies, actually. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. I'll get a pair of Wallabies. I, I've been, I've been kind of like thinking about getting a pair of Wallabies. I'm, but it. I'm not paying $110 Wallabies. I used to pay $40 on the ass. Right. Yeah, but how that was a while ago, Brody. Everything up, you know that. <laughs> All right, at least at least I'll pay eighty dollars. Eighty dollars, eighty dollars not bad. I would do eighty four. I would do. I would do fifty percent inflation. I might do a buck for. I gonna hold you up for the right color though. For the right color, and they got some fire colors right now too. For Clarks, hundred percent. I, I seen Kith like a year or two ago. Like I, I posted on the milk stand joint some Clarks that Kith did. They, they were kind of fire. He had flavors. They got they got a lot more. Flavors and plus, you know, now. I'm Jamaican too, so you know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But um, I know we said it earlier, but I'm really glad to be here, though, bro. Like, long nah, time coming. Nah. And I can't like, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna tell the world, yo, like, nah, yo, like, yeah, Ace been trying to push me to do this shit for a while. It was, it was his vision, but I was really happy to be a part of it. But yo, shit was just coming up. Mad shit was just coming up on my end, so. I guess the delay. I wear the, I'm wearing that. I'm wearing the delay, but we're here now, and I thank God for that. So. I mean, I I I appreciate it too, cause it's it's and, it's and keep it real, 100 percent honest. Like it's so many other people I could have did this with that would have made sense, but for some reason it just makes even more sense with you because, you know, 
humbly speaking, he called me and was like, yo, bro, I'm going to do some content. I said, nigga, you know I've been at Content Fest for like the last past year, right? Mm -hmm. He was like, word, text you literally the same day that's the run a show. He was like, yo, this is why I need to fuck with you. I'm like, yo, bro, like I've always been here. It's a fact, though. Just, you just, it's and a fact. And the day is like, yo, you got to... Like you got, you kind of got to utilize your community. Like you got the the people around you who skillful. Like, like I'm the type of person I can do everything, but I had to learn as an adult not to do everything. And you kind of have to teach people that that's around you, and you know. And me, how to put this? I'm trying not to stumble over my words, but like, I didn't want to do everything anymore. And also me, this is new for me too. So people are probably like, yo, Ant got a podcast? But people know I'm an introvert. People don't see me like that. People always, I go missing. I, I say I'm going to do something. Do you do, disappear. Do you do go missing? Yeah. So this is something I'm going to be consistent with. This is something I'm excited about. Yeah. Um, I'm not afraid to ask for help anymore. The reason, I, it's not that, I was really not afraid to ask for help because I didn't want nobody saying they had something over me. But now it don't even matter no more. If I ask you for help, I'm humbly asking for help because right. I'm trying to build something. Right. That's growth. Yeah. That's growth and maturity. Like, I, don't, I don't care. Because if you feel like you have something on me by me asking for something, you're a jerk. That's it. Yeah, I'm agreeing. If you don't see the, the bigger picture that we can make something big. Like, every everybody, I don't really want to get into race, but like, yo, because of what happened in the past to our people, like, we don't have the, the, the thinking that other cultures have. A thousand percent. Now, not all of us black people think small. Like, look at you and I, we think big. Mm -hmm. And not all, I'm not saying all black people think small, all black people think big, and not all white people think big, or all white people think small. There's, but the majority of our group of us, especially the group that we grew up in, we lived in a borderline neighborhood where like, you either could go to jail, sell drugs, or you could go to school and be successful. And hoop. And hoop. <laughs> okay? That's it, yeah. From our neighborhood, I know lawyers, doctors, I know people that went to jail. I know people that's not alive with us. That's the same right. age as us. Right. So like we lived in a, a neighborhood that was like, you could go either way, bro. Mm -hmm. And it's a blessing for us to be here today. And that alone is milk. Right. That is very milk. I'm a, I'm a caveat off of what you said with um, is big thinkers, is small thinkers. My my biggest thing is um, like I said before, judging. Yo, don't judge what I'm doing. And you talk to these people, especially people like a career base, yeah, they're never really gonna understand the entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurial spirit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I stopped even trying to explain these things to people, right? And people ask me, well, yo, what do you do? How do you, why are you doing so much? Like, yo, because I want to do it. Look, I'm gonna do what the fuck I want to do. Like, man, you gonna accept it or you not? You don't have to, I don't care if you accept it or not. But um, you not got a role coming up. Uh, I address the cast. I'm doing this, this, I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm doing this styling thing. People are like, yo, why? Like, how, why are you doing so much? Why not? If I got the time to do it, I'm gonna do it. You understand what I'm saying? And who's gonna and tell me that I can't do it? If I'm still getting my money, I'm still figuring out how to pay bills and I'm really stacking up, getting paid for a different way. What's the complaints about? But people got these nine to five jobs, they scared to take a leap. Some people, not judging either. And it's you know okay saying? because now everybody could be a chief. We now need everybody in, can be cheap. We need right. Indians too. 150%. There's nothing wrong with being an Indian, bro. And that's okay. I'm not saying, yo, leave your job. If that's what you want to do, do that. But don't but judge don't me judge. for it. Don't, yeah. don't talk to me about what I'm doing. Like, I'm not bothering you. That'd be one of my biggest things. A lot of people do it too. But that's just the human thing that bothers me, where it's like, we all have a lane, we all have things to do. Because put it this way if you do what you have to do, I do what I have to do, and then we come together, we can all be great. People don't see it that way. Nah, everybody worry about what the next person doing. It's a fact. Like, yo, some, yo, somebody said something so interesting. It was like, yo, he was like, yo, we sitting at a table, right? We both order the same thing. But you so worried about how I'm eating my food, your food get cold. Mm. And now when you finally eat your food, your food cold. Now you mad at me. That's heavy. When, he, when that person, I forgot who said that, son. I was like, yo, that's a fact. That's how people really live in life. Bro. That's Remember actually heavy. That's heavy shit. You order yo. the same food, but you watching me eat, so your food get cold. Now you mad at me. Wow. That's heavy. I like that, actually. Bro. At the end of the day, man, 
I'm, I'm just scratching the surface of understanding what my purpose is, man. And a lot, a lot of our purpose is this, is to be of service and just um, share your knowledge, man. Right. Like, don't, don't be like, oh, I'm not telling you this shit. Or if I tell them, yo, bro, one thing I'm going to say on this podcast every episode, there's enough for everybody. Mm-hmm. There's enough. It may not seem like it or feel like it, but there's enough for everybody. And, and the scary part is there's some people that know that and they don't want people to know. That, there's people that know that that don't want people to know that. And that's not right. Because if, they, if, if, if people have you living the mindset of scarcity, they can control you. But when you, but when you feel like life is abundant, no, no, no one can stop you. Hmm. Like my affirmation is this book that I, out of this book I read, uh, Happy Pocket Full of Money. I am wealth, I am abundance, I am joy. Bro, you say that to yourself all the time. You, yo, son, you, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wealthy mind frame that will bring you actual cash, that will bring you happiness, that will bring you joy. Because you are who you are. I am. Shameful plug. We got, I got another series that's going to be on the Milk Stand po- um, YouTube channel called I Am. And I'm going to be going around talking to people like, like who are you? I am, like, you're, you're John Egger, right? So you'll be like, I am John Egger. I'm a stylist. Like, you may not be a superstar stylist, but you're a stylist. It's something that you want to do. I saw some people, I'm a designer, I'm a creative for the last past two years, and that's all I've been doing, mm. especially during this pandemic. Even though I'm getting, am getting unemployment, like, I've had a, a creative design business for the last past two years. I've been starting to do more graphic design for people. Mm. I've started to do more t-shirt printing. Fire. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you am, said, I you spoke it into existence, though. Yeah, and, and, and it's not, you're not faking the funk. Just say, say that you are, and then you do. That's it. And the universe will, will do the rest for you. Right. Let's believe in it, too. Because, yeah. um, yeah, you could say whatever you want to say. I am whatever. But if you, if you yourself don't believe it, and that's tough. That's tough for a lot of people. It is, because... You know why? Because it's the scare factor that comes into play. Hundred percent. A lot of us do get scared. I get scared too. As as much leaping as I've done, like I know, like I I've have I've, I've have issues where like even I, I could I could leap a million times, but that million and one time I'll sit there and be like, damn, should I leap this time? Yo, you know it's crazy you say that, right? Uh, I want to start this business. But you scared? As fuck. Um, I have the capital to do it. Mm. And it will literally be the only business I start with an overhead. And I think that's why I'm so scared to do it. But I wanna, I'm, going, I'm going to do it. I did, I've gained the knowledge for it. I'm pretty much knowledgeable, really knowledgeable on it now. But I want to start a trucking company. So I'm going to jump out the window. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. What type of trucking company? Uh, it's day cabs, so it's the trailers. So I can hook trailers on the back. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Cause... Well, I was, I've been thinking of starting a trucking company, but like a uh, dump truck. That's a really so good my, business so too. My, so my dad works for the union. He basically builds, he's part of almost every build in New York City. Okay. He's working on uh, LaGuardia right now. He operates the cranes. But he was telling me about the dump trucks, how like if you buy a dump truck, you can rent it out a day for $800 a day mm-hmm. cash. Easy. And my grandfather does it. He has two trucks. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. My uncle's in the day cab business, so he does like the 18 wheelers and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's making like 19 grand a month. He has eight trucks. So I got a mentor. Um, I'm just really scared Kevin? to take. Nah, my, my brother's, my father's brother. Oh, okay. I'm just really scared to take this leap for some reason, bro. Take your time. Take your time. I'm going to, but I, that's my, that'd be like my thing, right? That's what, I can leave certain things to my kids or whatever, but that's the thing. Like, all right, cool. I know this, this is coming in a month. And I'm free to do what I want to do. What I really want to do creatively. That's just my base. Like I said, it's the only thing. Everything else that I'm doing business-wise has no overhead. And that was the plan. Like, all right, cool. If I could do these two, three things on the outside, refing and everything else that I'm doing, it's no overhead. So I know whatever's coming in is residual. It's coming in. You know what I'm saying? That's the only thing with overhead, and I think that's what's scaring me the most. And I don't... I want to yeah. get it right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I take but, the leap. I'm going to take the leap. Yeah. I'm going to do it. Due time. Um... Just don't, uh, when I say just don't, I'm just going to offer you my advice. I know you're not asking for it, but one day at a time. A thousand percent. That's, I'm going to just tell everybody this, like, this Milk Stand podcast is, it's, it's about fashion, sneakers, wellness, mental health, uh, 
I love cars too. We didn't even touch on that. Mm-hmm. But you know, we're gonna be here for a while, so you know, to talk about those in later episodes. But most importantly, is like one day at a time. Everything that everything and anything that you want to achieve, one day at a time. Because if we look at the whole picture, a lot of us, a lot of us get like anxiety and let that shit scare us out of what we, what we really want to do and what we want to accomplish. Mm-hmm. One day at a time. But with that said, man, wrap up episode number one, Milk Stand Pie. My brother. My brother. Thank you guys. If you if you sat here and watched this, uh, this is only the begin only the beginning. Um, and I'm so happy that you guys watched it. I'm so happy to be here. John Egger, and I'm Ace. Two things. Is enough for everybody. And when you milk, you milk.